In part four of my Tower Basics series, I'll continue to build and test towers, focusing on the more optimal X cross bracing designs. I'll also spend some time investigating if the five centimeter spacing of the initial design was ideal for these legs or not. Like I just mentioned, in this video, I will be focusing on the mini towers on the right side of this picture with the X cross bracing design. I'm labeling these towers 4, 5, and 6, but I'm actually going to present them in a different order. First, I will be analyzing tower number 6 because it is the best direct comparison to the previous towers because it has the same 5 centimeter vertical cross member spacing. Then I'll be presenting tower number 4, which has only 3 layers of cross bracing, and then finally tower number 5, which has 4 layers. Here is the X base cross member build with 5 cm vertical spacing. This one can be directly compared to the previous three towers in the last video to compare how well this bracing design holds the legs in place. This tower was 2.66 grams or 0.2 grams heavier than the build with the Z style cross bracing. Let's see if that extra mass was helpful. Remember, the reason for using the X base design was to effectively cut the individual cross members in half, which makes them four times stronger, according to our buddy Euler. Don't forget to glue the center joint in the middle of the X's. I'll pick up the live testing at around 13 kilograms. That should already give you an idea of how much this design will hold. Now we're getting somewhere. This was the first design that held over 15 kilograms, holding 16.342 kilograms for a very respectable efficiency of 6,144. This result was over 40% better than the Z-shaped cross members of build number three. Let's see if we can tell exactly what piece failed first. I'll pause the video right before the failure. We can clearly see that the leg is failing right in the middle of the top layer of the tower. If you recall, the previous two designs had the cross members fail first. This new X design has solved that problem and made the cross members strong enough for these legs. This is really good information for taking the next steps in the optimization process. If we are happy with holding 16.3 kilograms, we could keep the same legs and go with lighter cross members or even reduce the number. If for some reason we wanted to hold more weight, we could just increase the leg density as the cross bracing is not the weakest link anymore. For the next build, I'm going to reduce the number of cross members down to three layers, or instead of five centimeters vertical spacing, it will be 8.33 centimeters. This will lower the buckling strength of the legs, but perhaps it will still hold 15 kilograms like we want while reducing the mass of the tower. Let's see. Here are the build pictures of the three layer tower with the larger spacing. At this point, it's a bit of trial and error optimization to see what the ideal balance is between these specific legs and how short the minimum distance must be to maximize efficiency or to try and hold a specific target weight. One quick build tip. You might have noticed I've added wax paper to the middle of the sides of the jig. This is to help prevent excess glue from getting under the X joint and gluing the cross members to the jig. Another option could be to build the jig with a notched out section in the middle area to prevent that. I will probably try something like that the next time I design a tower jig. You can see that the weight of this tower is 2.21 grams, which means going from 5 cm spacing to 8.33 cm vertical spacing has saved us 0.45 grams. But will it still be strong enough? Let's test it and see how it does. I'll start the video at around 9 kilograms. It's looking good so far. Not quite good enough. It only held 10.294 kilograms for an efficiency of 4,658. It's still a reasonable result, but it's not nearly as good as the 5 centimeter spacing which gave us a 6,144 efficiency score and held over 16 kilograms. Remember, all these towers use exactly the same mass legs, so the only difference is in the cross bracing. Let's freeze the video right before the failure to see what happened. Can you predict which piece fails first? If you guess one of the legs, you'd be correct. 
Again, the X base cross bracing is still plenty strong enough, but we've increased the shortest segment of the leg, which has lowered its buckling strength by quite a bit. What if we split the difference in our next build and use four layers of cross bracing? Because everyone likes to save the best for last, you can probably guess that it works really well. Let's give it a try. Here is the final build in this series with four layers of X cross bracing. The vertical spacing is now 6.25 centimeters. As expected, the mass of 2.33 grams is right between the previous two builds. Let's see how this one does. The suspense is killing me. I'm starting the live video at around 14 kilograms. That has to be a good sign. I love the loud, violent breaks. You know you have done well when there is an exploding aspect to your test. It turns out this one held 17.177 kilograms for a pretty impressive efficiency of 7,372. What is really amazing is that this tower was almost 10 times better than our poor build number one, which used the exact same legs. You might be wondering why this tower held over 17 kilograms and the one with five layers only held around 16. I attribute that to the variation in the wood itself. Even when you use the same mass pieces, the balsa internally is not identical. This is also just a sample of one. If we built 10 of each, I would expect the tower with five cross braces to hold more actual weight than the one with four more often than not. This is just another reminder of the random variation in this event, and some would say luck with these builds. Let's freeze the action to see the failure mode. Just like the other X design builds, this one had a leg failure, which is a good sign that our cross bracing is doing its job. If the goal was to further optimize this exact design at the 15 kilogram loading amount, I would definitely keep these legs, probably stick with four cross members, and reduce their mass by using less dense wood. In the next video, I'll summarize the results of what we've learned in this series and talk more in general about how to approach optimizing all aspects of tower design. Thanks for watching and don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions.